So our topic for today is titled Interfaces. So we have briefly discussed interfaces before with chapter 3. So kasama siya sa conceptual model. So sa, inter in sa interfaces, we have just discussed metaphor interface and card interface in which ang mapinipartay niya is yung visuals. Now, we're, what we're going to discuss are the different types of interfaces that we use across different types of devices, softwares, or applications. So, for the overview or the learning objectives that the student must know, in here, we're going to discuss 20 common types of interfaces. We'll discuss the main design and research considerations for each of the different interfaces. And also, we're going to study which interface is best for a particular application or activity. So, let's start with um, looking into what are the different types of common interfaces. Now, here are the 20 interfaces that we're going to cover. We're going to start, obviously, from the very basic, which is the command line interface, Next would be graphical, third would be multimedia, then the rest is yung iba ng mga bagong forms of interfaces like virtual reality, web, mobile, appliance, voice, fan, touch, and so on. Now, through the span of a decade, we were introduced to different kinds of interfaces that we are now enjoying. Like for example, parang kailan lang wala pang VR or hindi pa ganun ka-efficient yung virtual reality technology. Pero ngayon, ang dali na lang yung ma-integrate sa mga iba't ibang uh, types ng ating smartphones. You just have to have a VR box to use that. Okay. So, we're going to start first again with the command line. So, what are command line interfaces? Now, I'll just read this uh, statements or sentences na nakabulit. So, commands such as abbreviations, for instance, IS, is typed in at the prompt to which the system responds. For example, by listing current files. Some are hardwired at keyboard while others can be assigned to keys. Efficient, precise, and fast. Large overhead to learning set of commands. Now, command line interfaces class is very common with our desktops and even our computers. Basically, if you are programming or conducting your program, kahit ano pang programming language yan, like Python, C++, Java, every time that you're going to use a compiler, in which you execute a series of lines or codes, you're technically using a command line type of interface. Pero ang pinaka-common type of command line interface would be the command prompt and then the PowerShell. So, si command prompt and PowerShell, meron siya pagka Windows operating system yung ginagamit mo. Ma'am, how about the other forms of operating systems? Meron din po ba silang command line interface? Kagaya ni Command Prompt at ni PowerShell, meron po. Ngayon, um, aside from uh, using compilers or softwares or applications na kailangan mong i-type yung instruction or code and then i-validate siya ni computer pag nag-match yung code or yung command dun sa dictionary nila or sa system nila, magre-return siya ng uh, magre-return siya ng output or ng result or response to sa tinipe mong instruction. Ngayon, class, ang command line interface is also useful for creating batch files. If you're not aware what is a batch file, yun yung na-encounter natin na dot .bat na parang uh, notepad na, may notepad na icon and then may gear sa loob. Sometimes, when we encounter batch files or dot .bat, we think of it as a virus. Pero that bot, though we could still, uh, though we could create a virus out of that bot, or sort of a worm or something like that, program na ganyan, ang that bot ay ginagamit din natin for processing automatic commands. And they are powered by command line interfaces. And the last thing about command line interfaces is that, for example, nasira yung touchpad mo or yung mouse mo and you have no other way of accessing your computer or navigating around your computer. Would it still be possible to use it 
even without your mouse or your touchpad. Yes, that is still possible po by entering different types of keyboard keys or what we also call the shortcut keys. So, using that by entering shortcut keys verified by a computer, then you are basically or technically using a command line base of interfaces. Now, command line interfaces are integrated with other forms or types of interfaces. And hindi siya ma-abolish kasi napaka-importante pa rin ang command line interfaces. So, bakit nauna natin i-diniscuss ang command line interface? Kasi po, si command line interface yung kauna-unahang way ng pang pag access ng isang tao sa computer. Kasi late na na nai-attach or na-invento si mouse. So, basically, how people interact with the computer at the dawn of um, the rise of computer technology, they use or they type certain forms of keywords para ma-access lang nila. The only disadvantage with command line interface is that yung large, we have a large overhead or we have to memorize Mad, nang, kailangan natin mag-memorize ng madaming keywords just to access a particular command or instruction. So, medyo yun yung nakaka-challenge kay command line interface. Now, we have other games or applications na gumagamit na command line interface like yung laro na Second Life. So, si Second Life para siyang game simulation. Ang kagaya niya is parang Sims. So, si Second Life, para madaming maka-access, hindi lang yung mga tao na walang disability, they have tried to uh, to insert a command line-based interface for the visually impaired, such as text SL. And also, other examples of um, ano na nagbibigay ng mga commands para sa mga with disability is yung mga iba't-ibang platforms na nagpo-provide sa atin ng... Um, ng mga subtitles. Ayan. So, research and design considerations. Form, name types, and structures are key research questions. Consistency is most important design principle. For example, always use the first letter of the command. Command interfaces are popular for web scripting. And I don't need to emphasize what is web scripting because you have already done or you have already have your um, subjects in which you do certain forms of web scripting. Okay, next topic is a more advanced type of interface over CL or command line interfaces. And that is what you call a graphical user interface or also known as GUI. We often encounter this with a with your Java programming subject. Kasi meron tayong tinatawag class, di ba, sa Java na console application and windowed application. So, ngayon, dito naman, graphical user interface or GUI. So, Xerox Star first uh, WIMP or introduced the WIMP which gave us rise to graphical user interface. So, bago tayo nagkaroon ng GUI, yung ating ma interfaces or visual na itsura ng ating desktops or devices ay parang boxy or pa-window. So, kaya siya tinawag na WIMP or WIMP, which stands for, the W stands for Windows. The sections of the screen can be scrolled, stretch, overlap, open, close, move around the screen using the mouse. While the icons in I sa WIMP are pictograms that represent applications, objects, commands, and tools that were open when clicked on. So, alam nyo naman class ko ano yung mga icons. So, yung mga icons na to parang mga rep picture representation na kamuka or katulad ng mga base sa mga physical objects. Na halimbawa, pag may nakita ka na yung icon na to, halimbawa nakita mo na mukha siyang house, so it pertains to home or the main page. So, binasi natin siya sa actual na object. If you saw a trash can or a trash can na icon, you already know what it does. Kasi, in real life, may isang real object na trash can. And ano ginagawa nyo sa trash can? Doon nyo tinatapon yung mga bagay na ayaw nyo na, or hindi nyo na kailangan, or yung mga basura. So, ganun din sa 
trash can or recycle bin na icon sa ating desktop. We use it for dumping unwanted digital files. So that's the uh, reason of use behind the use of icons. Next, we have the menus. Menus. So you already know what is a menu. Menu is not the list that you use to order in a restaurant. Menu in our computer are a line of commands usually attached at the upper part of your software or application. Halimbawa, example of that would be file, edit, ayan, view, about us. So those are example of menus or menus. These are the list of options that can be scrolled through and selected. The pointing device, so from the word itself, pointing device, it usually pertains to the mouse. How the mouse controlling the cursor at a point of entry to the windows, menus, and icons on the screen. Now, if we cannot use command line interf um, if we do not prefer the use of command line interface, we can access our WIMP or graphical user interface using our touchpad or a mouse or a pointing device. Okay. So, this is the first generation of the first graphical user interface. If you look closely, class, in the illustration that you see here, napaka-boxy nung design, right? They are either, naglalaro lang yung shapes sa square and then sa rectangle. Compared dun sa mga itsura or bagong itsura ng ating graphical user interface na soft na yung edges ng icons. If you go to Facebook, if you go to Instagram, if you go to your own computer, you'll notice, or even to your smartphone, you'll notice that the icons are no longer, uh, hindi na sila boxy yung itsura. Well, you can still choose that uh, option, pero most of the, parang ang trend ngayon when it comes to icons or interfaces is to lessen the boxy or ma-edge na itsura. Parang circular or soft yung edges or dulo no icons and even ng mga tabs na kiniklik natin. So anyway, this is the first generation of graphical user interface na hindi ko ma hindi ko masabi kung naabutan niyo or naalala niyo pa. Ayan. And these are the sample naman ng mga menu-based type of devices. Like for example, our smartwatch. So if you've used a smartwatch or has a similar product like this, you'll see that they are mostly um, powered or meron silang icon. So, makikita nyo man, observe the icon closely class. Hindi siya boxy yung interfaces niya ngayon. Kasi bago to eh. So, yung icons niya ay soft yung edges. As much as possible, they try to soften the edges of the icons. Yun yung trend kasi ngayon. Now, this smartwatch is uh, solely incorporates a menu or icon-based type of command. So, ito, under pa rin siya ng graphical user interface because it makes use of icons to represent a series or lines of commands. Ayan. So, the window design. So, windows are invented to overcome physical constraints of a computer display. Sabi natin, dati, the only way that we could access the earlier versions of computers is through the use of command line interfaces, which is too time-consuming, especially if you just want to access your computer for typing, and you're not after for coding or for tweaking some of the important functions, like date, accessing your database, ayan, or programming. Kaya nagkaroon tayo ng WIMP or Windows-based design. So, through the use of icons, the user don't have to think too much about it. Just have a mouse with him. And then, pwede niyang i-click yung icon na yon to perform certain functions or para makapunta siya doon sa particular application na gusto niyang gamitin. Now, pag sinabi natin window-based design, yung windows-based design is what you see on the screen. Basically, anything that you could access inside your smartphone, your desktop, or laptops is under what you call a window design. So, window design, para hindi masyado makalat yung information or malesen natin yung information overload, magkasya siya sa isang screen, we make use of what you or what we call a scroll bar. So, alam nyo na may scroll bar. Yun yung parang uh, windows uh, usually located at the left side of the screen. 
So, meron tayong arrows pointing upward, merong isang mahabang rectangular bar, and then the arrow pointing downward. So, we use that to navigate it, uh, through the first page up to the last page of the window. So, this is an example of a window design. Yung pinaka-window design, wala ibang uh, additional form of interfaces. Like the thumbnails on the top websites visited and suggested highlights. Now, katalasan ng win pinaka-window-based design ay ina-adapt ng mga, um, ng mga internet browsers natin. Para madaling matandaan ni user ano yung mga icons na already displayed doon sa browser. Like, even we have a win another example of window-based interface to familiarize with are the website designs like this one. So, meron tayong scroll. Ayan, meron scroll bar dito para ma-navigate natin yung website na to. Like, for example, Jolly Florist. Ayan. Is this method any better? Like, for example, PG Finland. Ayan. And then we have what we call the menu style. So, sa menu style, meron tayong flat list. Good for showing large number of options at the same time when display is small. We have drop-down, shows more options on the same screen. For example, cascading. We have the pop-up, when press command key for relevant options. We have contextual, which provides access to often used commands associated with a particular item. We have the collapsible that toggles between plus and minus icons on a header to expand or contract its content. And we have mega in which all options using uh, 2D drop-down layout. Now, si menu style, alam nyo na yan. So, meron tayong uh, menus na nasa naka-display na, yung naka-flat list. For example, file, edit, view, ayan, yung nakikita nyo sa mga softwares. Meron tayong drop-down. So, ikiklik mo pa siya and then nandun yung choices. Ayan, magpa-pop up yun. Meron tayong tinatawag na pop up. So, when press the command key for relevant options, meron tayong contextual, collapsible, and so on. So, to better understood what are the different types of menu styles, you may either uh, Google each of them so you could see the visual or graphical representation of it and what particular forms of applications or software makes use of the different types of menu style. Pero, I have also up, uh, attached a video from YouTube in na uh, nagano nag show ng iba't ibang types ng menu style. Next is this is the template for a collapsible menu. So this is what a collapsible menu looks like. Ayan. So not a very good illustration, but you get the idea. This is a mega menu. So ayan, uh, ang mega menu or menu Makikita nyo siya class sa mga, usually sa mga website. So, ginagamit nila yan para ma-highlight yung mga, uh, mga kinakategorize sila. For example, furnitures by room. Ano-anong furnitures by room yung available sila? So, meron silang bedroom. And then, yung bedroom na to, pag click mo, you'll be redirected to different types of bedroom na binebenta nila. So, that is an example of a mega menu. Para siyang naka Categorize na and then nakababa yung mga iba't ibang subcategories. Now, if you click each of them, you will be redirected to another page. Solely dedicated to that category or subcategory. And again, this is an example of a mega menu. Research and design considerations. So, we have window management. It enables users to move fluidly between windows. So, napaka-present na po ng Windows management. So, later sa Zoom, ipapakita ko sa inyo how we, go, how we use that. Um, example then another thing about Windows management na madaling ma-visualize nyo is every time that you go into access the internet browser. So, you can create multiple tabs on each of, uh, in your, inside a window browser na naka-open sa inyo. And that is under window management also. How to switch attention between windows without being or getting distracted. The design principles must be you must make use of proper spacing, grouping, and as much as possible, one of the key rules in achieving a good design in any HCI product is the simplicity. How you're going to incorporate minimalist or simplicity in your web design para hindi masakit sa mata. And which terms to use for menu options? For example, front versus bring to font or front. 
mega menus are easier to navigate than drop down ones. Kasi pag binaba mo lang siya dun sa website, just like the example here, makikita mo na agad siya by category. Yung drop down kasi minsan bigla nawawala eh, pag naklik na natin, di ba? You have experienced that before. Ayan. So, icons class are assumed to be easier to learn and remember than commands. Kasi ang icon meron siyang picture or graphical representation of that product. So, madali nyo ma-distinguish or malalaman kung ano yung purpose ng isang icon just by looking at the pictograph. Tapos, hindi naman siya kabod pictograph lang. Kadalasa merong nakalagay kung ano yung pangalan ng application na yun or command. Icons can be designed to be compact and variably positioned on the screen. Now, icons are pervasive in every interfaces. Website makes use of icons. Your smartphone has icons. Even your own desktops is flooded by icons. For example, they represent desktop objects, tools for example, a paintbrush, applications for instance, a web browser, and operations such as cut, paste, text, accept, and change. So, icons, since the Xerox star days, icons have changed their looks and feel. It used to be just black and white, color, shadowing, photorealistic images, 3D rendering, and animation. Now, many designed to be very detailed and animated, making them both visually attractive and informative. It could be highly inviting, emotionally appealing, and it makes the software or the, uh, the particular software application feel alive. So, icon forms. The mapping between the representation and underlining referent can be similar. For example, a picture of a file to represent the object file. So, that is, uh, sa icon kasi we have three types of icon forms. We have similar, analogical, and arbitrary. So, analogical, um, we use a picture such as a pair of scissors to represent cut. Pag naman arbitrary, we make use of an X to represent delete. So, ma'am, what or how are we going to distinguish the different forms of icons or different types of icons? Pag similar, ibig sabihin, ito'y literal na picture nung isang bagay. For example, magpiprint tayo. Ano yung icon ng print? You see a picture or a logo of a printer. And if you click that, it will literally print your file. So, yun yung similar. Kamukhang-kamukha nung icon na to, yung yung function niya or yung gamit niya or yung command. Pagka-analogical, it makes use of analogy para malaman mo kung ano yung process. For example, scissor. Why do we need scissor? We use scissor, ano ba yung gamit ni scissor? We use scissor for cutting things. Pero how do we use a scissor in our word text? Ano yung kinakat natin sa tinatype natin na word file? We cut or we delete it temporarily. So, we use the analogy of scissor para to indicate na this icon functions as cut icon. Okay? And arbitrary, we also make use of a not so, uh, not so obvious representation of an icon like X, which represents delete. Okay, the most effective icons daw are the similar ones. Kasi yung similar ones from the word itself, kung ano mismo yung gamit niya, yun mismo yung nakadesign na icon. Many operations or actions are making it more difficult to represent it. We use a combination of objects and symbols that capture the salient part of an action. So, these are the examples of two types of icon styles. So, you can see, so medyo circular na yung icon. So, the one with the compass is an example of a safari. This one is a dictionary and this one is a printer icon. So, we still also use the flat 2D icons for a smartphone and a smartwatch like this one. Okay. So, for our activity, let us just skip this part. I will discuss it later on through or via Google Classroom or other modes of interactive device that we use for our virtual class. So, basic edit uh, icons that appear on the phone, even our editing apps like, uh, for example, Lightroom. So, meron siya mga icons sa ilalim and meron siya sinisignify na function. So, we make use of icon. Research and design considerations related to icon, there is a wealth of resources for creating icons. We use it for guidelines, style guides, icon builders, library, and online tutorial. Mom, can I create my own icon? 
Yes, you could. You could also download your own icon if you're planning to create an application or software. So usually, icon na um, na downloadable is sinasave siya as that icon. So text labels can also be used alongside icons to help identification for small icon sets. <coughs> For large icon sets, for instance, photo editing or word processing can use the hover function. Okay, next is the mobile interfaces. Now, you already know what is a mobile interfaces because it's very prevalent. And most of us have had our own smartphones, be it an iPhone, Huawei, or Android-based form of smartphone. Now, mobile interfaces are handheld devices that is intended to be used while on the move. Have, they have pervasive, increasingly used in all aspects of everyday and working life. We use it for fitness tracking. We use it with smartphones. Ayan, we use it for music, entertainment, and so on. So, imagine class, this handheld devices, usually it initially started from telephones. Now, we have uh, from Symbian. After Symbian, we now have smartphones in which we could use it for watching series, for playing apps. We can use it for education. We can utilize it for uh, with different forms of activities. And that's how useful it is. Kaya nga, thus it hailed the name smartwatch or smart, uh, sorry, not smartwatch, smartphone. So we also have larger size tablet which is also under mobile interfaces. So, including those used by flight attendants, marketing professionals, and at the car rental returns. So, the very, one of the first apps na interactive is the iBeer app. No mga early, no mga siguro 2013, 20, ah, hindi naman, 2014, 2015, ayan na, uso yan. Yung parang sinsimulate niya na meron kang iniinom na beer app. Alalam, parang ano lang siya. Parang novelty type of app. We could also use our smartphone for reading QR codes and barcodes. Okay, research and design considerations about smartphones. Mobile interfaces can be cumbersome to use for those with poor manual dexterity or fat fingers. So, ito yung nagiging problema nun. So, the key concern is heat area. Area on the phone display that the user touches makes something happen, such as a key or an icon, a button, or an app. But the good thing, class, with our smartphone, if you have fat fingers or your person with a disability, um, smartphone innovators or yung mga nag invento ng smartphone and manufacturers of smartphones, they provide different forms of interfaces or interaction types. So, it's not just um, yung icons or yung mga labels pwede yung i-enlarge para maba kung malaboy mata mo para mabasa mo kung mataba yung kamay mo mahirap sa yung mag-click na maliliit na icons you can increase and reduce the size and also if you're not key, keen on to uh, using the touch screen that much minimize lang yung gusto mong paggamit noon you could use the voice command so we have different ways of uh, using our smartphones Next is the appliances. So, the appliances, we have different appliances at our home. Examples of that would be washing machines, remotes, toasters, printers, and navigation systems. So, this pertains, appliances pertains to everyday devices can be found in home, public places, or even our own car. We can also have uh, appliances that is for personal use, like for example, a digital clock and even a digital camera. It could be used for short periods, like for example, um, appliances for watching a, used for watching a program, buying a ticket, and so on. It needs to be usable with minimal, if any, learning. So appliances should be easy to navigate at madaling matutunan. Example would be a simple toaster. So, kung sabi nga natin kasi ang HCI kailangan uh, madali siyang matutunan ng mga would-be users or client natin. We must put uh, ourselves in the shoes of our client. So, uh, paano ba ako magde-design ng product na madaling matutunan ng client ko? So, kailangan you must make the simple, uh, you must create it with simple steps. Simplicity is the key. Para hindi mahirapan si client, lalo na kung ang gagawin lang naman niya is magtotoast ng tinapay, ba't kailangan marami pang buttons na i-click? Why not just have a control like this one? 
Now, research and design considerations, you need to design a transient interfaces with short interactions, just like what I have discussed before. So, voice interfaces, examples of that would be Siri, Alexa, okay? So, we use that. So, before in the earlier releases of voice command interface, Siri pinakaunang uh, pinaka-popular interface nun, hindi pa siya ganun ka-interactive. Madaling mamali yung uh, artificial intelligence nung smartphone na yon. Ngayon, medyo interactive na siya. Madali na niya mabasa. Meron nga kayong mapapanood sa TikTok na video na nag-uusap si Alexa at si Siri as if talagang para silang totoong tao. So, by just analyzing a series of words. And also, through what we call machine learning, we are responsible for teaching our computers by collect, by the by computer collecting information in their databases and utilizing that by uh, through its uh, function ayan so have speech interfaces come of age ayan kunya uh, yung dati kasi yun nga yung hindi madaling ma-recognize yung mga voice commands Natin. Like, for example, rec, a nice beach, ayan. Hindi madaling nare-recognize. Ngayon, madali na. So, medyo hindi na mahirap yung interaction sa mga voice command interfaces. So, modeling human conversations, people often interrupt each other in a conversation. Especially, like, for example, ordering in a restaurant rather than let the waiter go through all of the options. With speech technology, it has a similar feature called barge in. Users can choose an option before the system has finished listing all of the options available. Structing VUI dialogues, di uh, directed dialogues are where the system is in control of the conversation. For example, meron kasi tayo dalawang form ng voice command. So, voice command natin, hindi, meron tayong voice command na more on, ano siya, more on conversational, like si Siri and Alexa. Meron naman mga voice command na hardware na specific yung kanilang sinasagot at specific din yung gusto nilang sabihin mo. So, we have voice assistants, ayan, Alexa, we have Cortana, we have Siri, and so on. So, research and design conversations. How to design system that can keep the conversation on track. Ayan. The type of voice actor. Ngayon, marami na tayo. Kumakalat na rin sila sa Twitter. Ah, sa Twitter, sa TikTok. So, merong male, female voice, merong neutral or dialect. So, pen-based devices naman. Usually, when we encounter pen-based devices for, we use it for digital signatures. Pero meron din mga apps na pwedeng uh, touch, ano na lang, halimbawa, touch screen na lang yung gagamitin mo, and then naayusin na lang nila yung pirma mo, or you can use it through your desktop, like uh, Doc Sketch. Ayan. So, pen-based devices enable people to write, draw, select, and move objects at an interface using light pens or styluses. Now, pen-based devices are not just used for e-signatures. They are more functional to be used by architects or graphic designers if magda-drawing sila sa Photoshop or magda-drawing sila sa, isa, sa loob ng computer nila. They make use of pen-based devices. Ayan, so this... Uh, what it looks like. So, a noto pen is being used in, it, in, in its internal components. So, advantages, it allows users to annotate existing documents quickly and easily. It can be used to fill in paper-based forms that can readily be converted to a digital record using standard type interfaces. Next is touchscreen. So, touchscreen is a very, one of the most popular forms of interfaces. So, our smartphones are, have touchscreens. ATM machines have touchscreens. Other laptops or de desktops have touchscreens. Other devices have touchscreens. So, touchscreens or single touchscreens, meron tayo. So, sa touchscreen, meron tayong dalawang types. We have single touchscreen and multi-touchscreen. <coughs> So, single touch screens are used in walk-up kiosks like ticketing machines or ATMs or yung mga kiosks na ginagamit natin sa pag-order sa mga fast food if they have one. We use it to detect the presence and location of a person's touch on display. While multi-touch surfaces supports a range of more dynamic uh, way to access your touch screen. Meron tayong fingertip action, for example, swiping, 
flickering, pinching, pushing, and tapping. Those are other forms of multi-touch command. So, this is an example of a multi-touch surface. Ayan, research and design considerations. So, I'll just um, leave this uh, part. You just have to read this kasi uh, pavilyar naman na tayo what is a touch screen. So, we also have what are gesture-based systems. So, gesture-based system involves moving of arms, hands to communicate. And a very good example of that na merong camera recognition, sensor, and computer vision techniques would be the now defunct... Um, Ano tawag doon? Yung nakikita nyo class sa mga arcade no may face-to-face -face pa. Kadalasa ginagamit siya sa mga applications pag sasayaw ka. So, that is called uh, Microsoft... Hanapin natin. Maka nandito. Ayan, Microsoft Kinect. So, Microsoft Kinect. So, kasi ngayon ang Microsoft Kinect hindi na siya ginagamit... Hindi na siya... Legacy na siya, defunct na siya. Ginagamit pa din siya pero hindi... Yung developer, they stop updating the system kasi inintegrate na nila yun sa ibang forms ng system. So, that is an example of a Microsoft Kinect. So, si Microsoft Kinect hindi lang ginagamit sa arcades para ma-monitor ma yung sayaw mo kung nagagaya mo step. Ginagamit din siya in the field of medicine. Like, for example, look at this. So, it recognizes core gestures for manipulating MRI or CT images using Microsoft Kinect. We also have uh, other applications that are gesture-based. So, those are example of gesture-based commands. Ang pinaka, uh, ano example nga nun, popular example would be the Microsoft Kinect or MS Kinect. So, next is the haptic interfaces. So, what are haptic interfaces? So, haptic interfaces provide tactile feedback by applying vibration and forces to a person's body using actuators that are enabled in their clothing or device they are carrying, such as smartphone. Vibro-tactile feedback can be used to simulate the sense of touch between remote people who want to communicate. Ultra haptics creates the illusion of touch in mid-air using ultrasound to make the illusion of 3D shapes. So, we have real-time vibrotactic feedback. So, basically, it nudges when playing violin incorrectly. Now, the, the haptic interfaces are not that very popular forms of interfaces. Kasi hin it's not that common to most of us. Though we have an idea based from the illustration that we see, we're not aware what does it do, most of us. So, I'll just provide or insert a video YouTube video showing you what are the different ways that we could use the haptic interfaces. Again, we have two types of haptic interfaces. We have the vibro-tactile and ultra-haptics. Okay. So, we're down to a few more, ano, few more interfaces and these are the least popular. And some are the most common use interfaces that we are not aware under this interface type pala. Next is the multimodal interfaces. It provides enriched user experiences by multiplying how information is experienced and detected using different modalities such as touch, sight, sound, and speech. Now, see si multimodal, from the word itself, multi, it combines different forms of interfaces. Basically, multimodal interfaces could also be under multimedia. It could be a combination of different interfaces that we have previously discussed. So, if your interfaces or the device that you are using supports touch, sight, sound, and speech, then that is an example of a multimodal interface. Example of that would be our very own smartphone that is under multi multi multimodal interfaces. Multimodal interfaces also are devices that, can, that has multi-sensor, that can sense the eye gaze, facial expression, and lift movement. Now, for example, tracking a person's movement. That is an example of multimodal interaction. 
Shareable interfaces, it refers to interfaces that provides multiple inputs and sometimes allow simultaneous input by co-located groups. And a great example of shareable interfaces would be Zoom and Gmeet. Kasi sa Zoom, meron tayo tinatawag na whiteboard. Pwede naman din mag-annotate si instructor. Meron ding option kay Zoom if you're aware na pag premium, uh, usually pag premium user ka, pwede kang magkaroon ng multiple host, pwede kang magkaroon ng chats, and then pwede ding makontrol ni participant yung um, window ni host ng Zoom meeting. So, yun yung tinatawag nating shareable interfaces. It allows um, the use or interactive um, parang communication we have usually large wall displays where people use their own pens or gestures interactive tabletops where small groups interact for example diamond touch smart table and surface so that is an this is an example of an smart board and an interactive tabletop So, benefits provide a large interactional space that can support flexible group working, can be used by multiple users, and can be point to and touch information being displayed. Simultaneous view the interactions and have the same shared point of reference as others. It could also support more equitable participation compared with groups using single PC. So, research and design considerations, core design concerns include whether size, orientation, and shape of the display has an effect on collaboration. So, basically, you already know what are the design considerations to look into uh, shareable interfaces. It must provide interactive ex experiences for both uh, people na nag access ng interface or device na yun. Tangible interfaces, ito naman yung mga type of sensor-based interaction where physical objects, for example, bricks are coupled with digital representations. When a person manipulates the physical object, it causes a digital effect to occur. For example, the an animation. Digital effects can take place in a number of media and places or they can be embedded in a physical object. So what are tangible interfaces? First, let us discuss what is tangible. The word tangible pertains to any type of interface that can be touched or physically touched. So, examples of tangible interfaces, we have magic cubes, flow blocks, and URP. So, learning to code and create with tangible magic cubes. So, this is what a magic cube looks like. Ayan. So, the benefits of having tangible interfaces, it can be held in one or both hands and combined and manipulated ways in ways not possible using other interfaces. It allows for more than one person to explore the interface together. People are able to see and understand the situation kasi nahahawakan yung nakikita mo. Not just a virtual or augmented representation of an object, but it has a physical representation. So, that's the good thing about tangible interfaces. So, also, we have the Vox Box, a tangible system that gathers opinions at events through playful, engaging interaction. So, para lang tong yung mga nabibili natin sa Shopee na cue card. Pero, ang pinagkaiba lang ni Vox Box is, ano siya, interactive siya, kagaya nito. So, augmented reality, I have previously brushed about some uh, the explanation about augmented reality versus virtual reality so augmented reality it combines the physical world and the virtual world example of that is pokemon go so also augmented reality uh, many applications including medicine navigation air traffic control games and everyday exploring makes use of this type of technology or interface so, other examples, ma'am, what are uh, other, uh, what are the other ways that we could use or make use of augmented reality? In the medicine field, we have virtual objects. For example, x-rays and scans are overlaid on part of the patient's body. Eight physicians' understanding of what is being examined of operated, that is under augmented reality. In traffic control, we have dynamic information about aircraft overlaid on a video screen showing the real planes and so on, taking uh, landing, taking off, and taxing. It helps identify planes difficult to make out. 
So, augmented reality overlay on a car windshield. Ayan. So, that is an example of that. Okay, we also can use augmented reality for trying on uh, makeup like this one. Ayan. So, okay, uh, wearables, examples of wearables na interfaces were something that you could wear with your eyewear or you could wear in your wrist, uh, head, ayan, jewelry. So, those are examples of wearables. Pero the twist about wearable interfaces is that they are interactive. Example would be a smartwatch. That is a form of wearable interfaces in which you could do or perform various tasks using that uh, small wearable devices such as a smartwatch on your wrist. Applications include automatic diaries like tour guides, cycle indicators, fashion clothing, ayan. So, Google Glass is an example of a wearable. Okay, the thing about wearables, you must consider the comfort, hygiene, ease of wear, and usability. Since it is wearable, is it possible to wash or clean the clothing once worn? Or if it is a smartwatch, how do we disinfect it? Especially, hygiene is very important nowadays, lalo na dito sa pandemic that we are in. We must uh, know how to properly disinfect our materials and not just the things that we use, na like clothes or slippers or shoes. We also have uh, must have ways to disinfect our smartphone or electronic devices and appliances na hindi siya masisira. So, yung mga dapat natin i-consider doon. So, ease of wear, madali ba siyang gamitin? Comfortable ba siyang isuot? So, robots, we are familiar with robots for the longest time. So, ngayon, we have vector robots, which is a type of social pet robot. Ayan, so we have domestic robots for helping around the house that can pick objects and do daily chores. So, meron at like vacuuming. Ayan, that is an example of domestic robots. We have pet robots as human companions. Example is si Vector. We have sociable robots that works collaboratively with humans. Ayan. So, social robots, we have cute and cuddly one like Mel and Paro, can open and close eyes and make sounds and movements. So, drones, drones are unmanned aircrafts that are controlled remotely and used in a number of contexts. So, pwede nat, uh, you already know what is the drones, napapanood nyo yan sa YouTube or if you own one, ayan. So, this is, an, this is an example of one of the drones. Ayan, a drone being used to survey the state of a ban vineyard. Drones are not used for video edits. Ayan, to make it look good. We also use it for monitoring. Okay, brain-computer interfaces. Ayan, so this one is usually used for people with disabilities. So, brain-computer interfaces provide communication pathway between a person's brain waves and external device such as a cursor on the screen. Person is trained to concentrate on the task, for example, moving the cursor. VCIs work through detecting changes in the neural functioning in the brain. So, BCI apps are games, for example, Brain Ball, enable people who are paralyzed to control robots. So, plus, another good thing about interfaces is some of the interfaces like brain-computer interfaces could be used to help people with disabilities, especially people who are paralyzed, to have a second chance at life. So, they could live uh, as much as possible parang normal. They could still access the apps that we have. They could enjoy the technology that we are having. Ayan, that is an example of a BCI type of interface used by a paralyzed person to select letters on the screen. Smart interfaces, we have phones, speakers, watches, cars, buildings, and sites. Ayan. So, we're on the last part of our topic. So, which interface is preferable to use? Now, we have to consider the cost, the task, the users that would use your interface. So, it depends on those factors. Is multimedia better than tangible interfaces for learning? Well, class, we can incorporate it both. 
Pero depending on your budget and the setting that you have. Usually, multimedia is preferable to use in lectures like, uh, like for certain subjects in the educational setting. And um, meron naman na kailangan ng tangible interfaces for learning. For example, uh, if laboratory-based yung in yung subject. Is speech as effective as command-based interfaces? Well, um, based from my personal observation, yes, it is. So, nakakapag-keep up na yung speech recognition systems natin. So, is multimodal interface more effective than a monomodal interface? So, to be honest, I prefer a multimodal interface because it is presented with different forms of functionalities or different ways that we could access a particular application or device. Another question, will wearable interfaces be better than mobile interfaces for helping people find information in foreign cities? Well, um, for now, I still prefer mobile or smartphone interfaces over wearable interfaces. Pero we'll see. Kasi lum habang tumatagal, every year nagkakaroon ng bagong updates sa mga wearable devices. Plus, mas madali siya at compact dalin. So, our virtual environment, the ultimate interface for playing games, ayan. Uh, mas okay na ba? Kasi sabi natin, nababawasan na daw yung parang activity natin. Mas interactive daw yung mga laro nung araw, like patintero, harang taga. Will it be possible na with the virtual interface? Kaya na, kel, uh, okay, mas okay ba na way na maglaro? Or okay ba yung gaming experience pag ginagamit natin virtual reality? Well, the answer is, it depends on your preference. But if you want na mas na-exercise ka, or mas maraming uh, parts ng katawan mo ang na-exercise, or nag interact nun sa game, or gumagalaw, it's preferable that you choose a interactive virtual reality game. So, are shareable, and last question or dilemma, are shareable interfaces better at supporting communication and collaboration compared with using network desktop PCs? Well, it depends on the use. Pero most of the time, it is easier to use shareable interfaces like for example, Bluetooth or the use of um, mga applications na madali ka makapag-share or makapag-exchange ng digital, digital files kesa sa in-network mo pa siya. So, mahabang process. Pero, useful pa rin naman yung network desktop PCs. Meron siyang mga particular or main usage na nga lang. So, this concludes our topic discussion for different types of interfaces. Okay, so, multimedia, from the word itself, multimedia, it refers to different forms of media. So, we have types of media. So, we have the linear and interactive multimedia. So, multimedia combines a single interface with various forms of interactivity. The most common components or parts of a multimedia would be graphics, text, video, sound, and animation. Users click on the links in an image or text, which is another part of a program. Animation or a video clip is played. Users can return to where they were and moves on to another place. So, I don't need to elaborate this much. So, you already know what is a multimedia-powered apps. So, pag sinabi natin multimedia, it combines audio, sounds, and video. Basically, every app that you use that supports all of this or supports three or more functions of this is a multimedia type of application. Now, for the pros and cons of using multimedia, it facilitates rapid access to multiple representations of information. It can provide better ways of representing information than can any media alone. It can enable easier learning, better understanding, more engagement, and more pleasure. It can encourage users to explore different parts of a game or story. Tendency to play video clips and animations while skimming through accompanying text or diagrams. Now, class, about something about multimedia. So, multimedia class are used as a interactive representation also of information. So, the good thing about using multimedia, if you are listening to a lecture that is animations, that is sounds, that is special effects, then learning is more easier because most of us are visual learners. However, exclude my uh, my preparation for this one because uh, I did not 
include a lot of interactive elements in my uh, pre-recorded video discussions. Okay, so an example of multi uh, multimedia learning app designed for tablet. So we have the Romance at Play app. Okay, research and design considerations. So how to design multimedia to help users explore, keep track of, and integrate the multiple representations. You must provide hands-on interactivities and simulations that the user has to complete to solve a task. Provide quizzes, electronic notebooks, and games. Multimedia is good for supporting certain activities such as browsing but less optimal for reading at length. Next is virtual reality. So you're already aware what is a virtual reality. We have discussed that before. So what is vir uh, also others at chapter 3. What is virtual reality and what is the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality? So virtual reality class, it usually targets the sense of sight. Secondary is a se uh, sense of hearing and then your sense of touch. We cannot literally or physically feel the texture or uh, wala tayo natatouch na parang may isang object doon. However, we are guided by instructions or parang um, picture kung paano natin i-action yung ating hands. So, parang medyo makontrol natin yung sense of touch. Pero hindi natin pa kaya yung may texture or parang may hinahawakan ka talaga. So, yun yung parang hindi kagaya ng mga nababaro natin sa Sword Art Online na parang realistic. Ayan. So, virtual reality is very much accessible nowadays. So, you can order it at your online, favorite online shopping platform like Shopee or Lazada. You just download a VR box and then have your Android or any form of smartphone that is compatible with a VR box and you can now have your own virtual reality or you could uh, access it. Now, it provides different or new kinds of experience. Kasi ang virtual reality, sabi natin, it completely, um, parang it, com by playing with your sense of sight, it completely uh, changes your view or world view or it parang dinadala ka niya sa isang virtual world. Okay, unlike sa augmented reality, ang augmented reality, so, halo siya ng, nakikita pa din yung virtual reality, ay ah, yung real world, tapos nasasamahan siya ng parang uh, interactive na gumagalaw na object or form. Example of that would be Pokemon Go. So, that is an example of augmented reality. Now, the pros and cons about that is you can have a higher level of fidelity with objects that they represent compared to multimedia. It introduces a sense of presence where someone is totally engrossed by the experience. So, ang virtual reality, napakagandang laroy nito if you were trying to uh, to play a horror, horror themed na game. Ayan, talaga mapifeel mo yung experience. Nakakatakot siya. It also provides different viewpoints, first and the third person. So, alam nyo naman class yung first person. So, yung view halimbawa is, ayan, ku ano yung view mo, yun yung first person view. Pag third person view, so parang view nung iba yon pero nandong ka lang sa scene. Ayan, yung halimbawa, um, di ba sa laro, you already know what is a first person. Yung view niya is as if ikaw yung nakakakita nun. Pero pag third person view, nakikita mo yung overall ng game. So, parang ano ka, omniscient ka na being doon. Nakikita mo or may access ka sa iba't ibang words or iba't ibang actions ng character. So, that is a third person view. So, we have different companies that produces different types of virtual reality apps. Now, application areas, it is usually used for video games, arcade games, for social groups. It could be also used for therapy for peer. Experience how others feel emotion. For example, empathy and compassion. We also make use or use it for psychology. Ayan. It then reach the user's planning experience for travel destinations. Especially, meron tayong pandemic ngayon and traveling is not um, possible at the moment. It is possible pero with certain risk. Um, you can now travel using virtual reality. So, merong mga, da-download ka lang na series of apps, and then makikita mo na, yung parang nandun ka mismo dun sa lugar na yon. So, para ma-experience mo siya, lalo na may sense of hearing ka. 
Okay. Architecture, it could be used for architecture, design, and education. So, for example, polygon graphics used to represent avatars for We Wait VR experience. Ayan. So, research and design considerations related to virtual reality. Much research on how to design safe and realistic VRs to facilitate training. For example, we have flying simulators which help people overcome phobias. So, the design issues, how is the best to navigate them? For instance, ano ba sa isang application sa virtual reality, depende mo. Ano ba mas okay? Mas okay ba na yung design ng aking software na virtual reality powered ay first person view or third person view? So, you have to weigh it. Ayan, ko ano mas bagay. How to control interactions and movements. For example, by using your head or body movements. How best to interact with information. For instance, by using keypads, pointing, and joystick. And the level of realism to aim the engender sense of presence. So, how do you make your virtual reality-powered application as realistic as possible? Last but not the least, we have the website design. So, I don't, again, this one, ah, hindi natin kayo la-elaborate to. Alam nyo kung ano yung website design. So, meron tayong, nakag, meron na kayong dalawang uh, subject na pinagdaanan kung saan ang focus dito ay sa website design, yung inyong WS01 and WS02. Now, Web design, it has come with different uh, versions. So, we, meron tayong web version 1.0, kung saan yung mga web designs natin ay hindi ganun ka-interactive. Hagan sa interactive na siya, may mga widgets na. Now, usability versus aesthetic. So, ito yung pinaka-pinagtatalunan natin when it comes to designing a web page. So, okay lang ba na yung website natin ay ma-design or ma-color? Or dapat ba sa website, iba-iba yung... Uh, yung design niya per page, well, it depends. Pero most common or pinaka-most common norm when designing a website, dapat consistent yung team. So, kung ang team color ng first page ng web page mo or index page mo ng website ay blue and white, so dapat yung next page ganun din. So, kailangan consistent siya. Ayan. So, breadcrumbs for navigation. So, we have category labels. Okay? Hindi mawawala yan sa isang web design. So, another thing about web apps is when is it okay to use ad web advertising and when it could be um, considered as intrusive, flashing, or aggressive. Kasi class, hindi naman natin maiwasan yung mga web apps. Kailangan din yan ng mga administrator para kumita sila or magkaroon sila ng flow of income or para ma-maintain nila yung website. Now, for example, website na illegal kagaya ni Kist Asia, ni Drama Cool, Drama Bus, ayan. So, kumikita sila, nagpo-provide sila ng entertainment for free, like by... Uh, dito, ma-access natin yung mga favorite natin K-drama, mga J-drama, pero, um, sa, pa, para malu, hindi sila maluge, ma-maintain nila yung website at makapag-provide sila ng services, nag a sila ng mga ibang website or mga pop-ups na minsan nakakairita, ba diba? So, pero kailangan nila yon para magkaroon sila ng income, para makontinue nila yung website, and also, dagdag salary nila yon kasi yun yung trabaho nila. Though, that is illegal. So, research and website considerations about the website. Now, we have many books and guidelines about website design. But according to Vince 2001, there are three core questions to consider when designing any website. First, where I am. Your in website must indicate what type of website it is. And then, where can I go? Your website must have icons or other interactive elements para ma hindi maligaw or hindi malito sa pagna-navigate ng website mo yung client or yung visitor ng website mo. And what's here? Also, you must be very vocal about do sa content or kung ano yung nilalaman ng website mo or ano yung website offering mo. So, those are the three important things to consider about website design.